morning shine, shine, shine. Las Vegas, shine your light on me. Welcome to Las Vegas Tonight with your award-winning host, Dale Davidson. Dale interviews fascinating guests from top-ranked celebrities to people just like you who have an important story to tell. For more than 15 years, Dale is broadcast every week from the fabulous Las Vegas Strip. He finds the people who really make Las Vegas a one-of-a-kind city and lets the world know just what's happening in this remarkable town. You'll discover why 50 million people visit the entertainment capital of the world every year. Stay tuned for another exciting episode of Las Vegas Tonight. Welcome to Las Vegas Tonight. I'm your host, Dale Davidson. We try our best to bring you fascinating guests, interesting guests. We've outdone ourselves this time. <laughs> we have Phil Waldrop, who uh, has a book called... Beyond Betrayal. Beyond Betrayal. And uh, we want to talk about where that title comes from. We discovered before uh, we rolled tape that we have uh, joint friends. Uh, particularly in Las Vegas. Thanks for coming well, on. Thanks for Appreciate having it, me, Phil. Dale. I'm honored to be here. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about your history. You're from Alabama originally? I am an Alabama native, grew up in North Alabama, and when I was seven years of age, just before my eighth birthday, I knew I was someone who needed a relationship with the Lord. Really? I had wonderful Christian parents. Wow. And growing up, going to church, hearing the gospel, and as a young tender boy of seven, I gave my life to Christ yes. and began serving the Lord even at that age. By the time I was a teenager, I wanted to go to Auburn University in Alabama and become sure. a veterinarian. Okay. But God had different plans and I knew he was calling me to ministry, surrendered my life at an early age to ministry, started wow. speaking in churches, and then ultimately got into doing conferences and writing and so many other things. And I look back now and I think, wow, God has been so good all oh, of these years. Yeah. And, and he knew, of course, as you know, from before you were born, before Absolutely. time, uh, what he would be having you do. But mm -hmm. this is an excellent example of somebody who had found a call and had a call and followed through on it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I envy you, you mm -hmm. know, because you knew early on that this is what you wanted to do. And I envy you for knowing Christ for that long. Mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah. a blessing. Well, it really is. And you know, when I look back at my life, I tell people so many things I'm doing today, I did not know in the beginning. Oh, I sure. was just saying, Lord, you, you want me to share your word, I'll share your word. And I think if I knew then all that would entail now, I might have been frightened yeah. and, and said, Lord, I can't do that. But you know, I tell people, it's just being obedient today to what God calls you to do. And the purpose is, Lord, just live your life through me. I don't have the ability to do this. Right. You just do it through me. And he has he's done that all of these years, and I just love what I do. Yeah. Now, let's talk about discernment. Mm -hmm. You know, discernment is often a, uh, a problem for me personally. Right. I'll say, okay, I have this on my heart, I think, it's, or maybe mm -hmm. I made it up, or maybe it's in my brain. Did you ever have, even though you, you've had that call, did you ever have that discernment issue yourself? Well, I did because, you know, I believe God speaks to us very clearly through his word. Mm -hmm. And I believe his word is, if we open his word and he can give us insight into what we need to do. Yeah. And I learned early on, if I want to do God's will, I delight myself in the Lord and he gives me the desires of my heart. Sure. And the desires are not things I want to do. If you delight yourself in the Lord, your desires become his desires right. and you begin to do. So I have focused all of these years on my personal relationship with the Lord. Most important thing I do every day. Sure. And as I did that, that discernment came. And yeah, there were times when I wondered, Lord, is this really what you want me to yeah. do? And you know, and sometimes God takes us down a, a dead end road. On purpose. Just to teach us something yeah, yeah. And, to, and to prepare us mm -hmm. for uh, something else in life. Yes. And so through these years, I've learned that discernment comes from his word, but being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And even when things don't turn out like we think they did, we say, Lord, um, what were you trying to teach me? God never wastes time and he never wastes experience. No, he always truth. wants to use everything to teach us to be like his son and to walk with him. Talk to me about the genesis of your book, Beyond Betrayal. Well, um, what happened? You know, 20 years ago, 
I had established my ministry, things were going well, and I discovered that someone who was like a brother to me, who worked in our ministry, was involved in some very serious immoral and unethical behavior. Uh -oh. it wasn't illegal by definition, right. but it was immoral and unethical, and he was riding on the coattails of our ministry to do a lot of it. And at first, I did, like everybody else who goes through a betrayal, I was in shock. This can't How be true. How could this happen? How yeah. can this happen? The very nature of a betrayal has an element of surprise to it. Sure. And so I thought, no, this is just a mistake. Well, when I finally realized, no, it's not a mistake, he really has betrayed me and our ministry. Wow. Then I, I like everybody who's been through betrayal, I got angry. Of course, and that's you know, the next stage. It's the naturally. next stage. Yeah. It's, it's almost yeah. like grieving. You're angry. Mm -hmm. And anger in and of itself is not a bad thing. Paul said in Ephesians 4, we can be angry and sin not. Yes. But when mm -hmm. anger grips you, which often happens in a betrayal because your emotions are so raw. Yeah. And I did not act out my anger. I didn't take it out physically. But I knew in my heart, I turned it inwardly, and I was just like a little teapot. I, I, I let it out sometimes in unhealthy ways. Yeah. And in times but in it was ways, in there. Yeah. it was in there. Yeah. And then I learned some healthy ways. And then I have to admit, Dale, I became bitter. Yeah. You know, how could this happen to me? I was angry at myself. Right. I certainly was angry at my betrayer. Why didn't I see this? And, Why you know, didn't I see it? Yeah, Why didn't somebody regrets. tell me? Yeah. And you know, people with good intentions, came to me and said, oh, I could have told you that was going to happen. Well, why didn't you? Yeah. You know, they, were, they thought they were validating me, mm -hmm. trying to make me feel better. Mm -hmm. And then when we've been betrayed, there's always those feelings of revenge. I want you to feel the pain you've caused me. Yes, of course. Because they've shattered your human life. Human nature. Yeah. It's human nature. And you know, as Christians, we don't always do that with, uh, with acting out physically, mm -hmm. but we do it verbally. Yes. We do it verbally. Yeah. And so I wanted to even the score for everything. That's what I wanted to do. And I realized all of that was happening to me. And I said, this is not a healthy way to live. No. And I wanted to process it well. Mm -hmm. And over a period of time, I discovered the insight, scripturally, biblically, how you can do that. Oh, really? Yeah. Let's, let's right away jump into that mm -hmm. because I'm sure there are people who have had serious betrayals you know, in marriage, for mm -hmm. example, right. you discover your mate has been mm -hmm. immorally involved with somebody or, uh, or a blood relative mm -hmm. turns on you and steals from you or whatever mm -hmm. it is. So there are serious issues. And so talk to the millions of people for <laughs> us and tell us how to solve this. Well, the first thing I had to realize, I kept wanting to know why did they do it? Yeah. And, I, and everybody wants to know that. I mean, was it something I did? Well. People betray you because they're selfish. It's the bottom line. Yeah. They put their self-interest ahead of the relationship they have with you. Mm -hmm. And then when I looked at all of those emotions I was experiencing, I said, now, Lord, how do I get through this? And I knew biblically that I had to forgive my betrayer. But I got to be honest, and people don't hear someone in ministry say this. I was telling the Lord, Lord, I can't betray him. Yeah. And I'll tell you why I felt forgive that way. Forgive him. You can't forgive I, I, him. I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't betray him either. I wanted yeah. to, yeah. Um, you know, feel the pain. But I, but I said, Lord, I've got to forgive him. Yeah. But I don't want to forgive him, and yeah. I don't feel I can. Yeah. And then here's here's why I felt that way, because I thought forgiveness meant that I had to immediately restore the relationship to the same level of trust that I had before the betrayer. Okay. And you know, one day I was, I had God's word open mm -hmm. and I realized something in the word of God that I never realized before. In the Bible, we're told to love people. We're told to be kind to people. We're told to forgive people and we're told to trust God. But not one time in all the word of God are we told to trust people. Mm -hmm. Because you realize, Dale, trust isn't something you can give away. Trust mm -hmm. has to be earned. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness you give, trust has to be earned. Mm -hmm. And if someone has shattered your trust, it's like, think of an implosion of a building. You know, in 10, 15 minutes, you can implode a building. Sure. But it takes weeks, months, and years for that building to be built. To go up. Yeah. And in a relationship that has been imploded by a betrayal, it will take months and years if the betrayer wants the relationship restored for trust to be rebuilt. And when I realized I could put healthy boundaries with the person who betrayed me, 
I didn't have to invite them back at the same level they were before. Mm -hmm. Then I could forgive them. And for me, I come to understand forgiveness is when I give up my rights to revenge. Mm -hmm. I don't have to spend my life trying to get even or mm -hmm. trying to inflict pain on them and to say, I forgive you. And, and in my case, I didn't get to say those words to him because the relationship was ended. But in my heart, I could say them to him if I saw them. And in my heart, yeah. I meant it. Mm -hmm. I forgive you for what you did to me. Mm -hmm. And now if God chooses to bless him, it's okay. Yeah. I don't have to hurt. Because forgiveness wasn't about releasing him. Forgiveness was about releasing me. Yeah, and that's the key, isn't mm -hmm. it? Because if you keep all of those, you talked about a teapot. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I kind of liken it to acid, right. you know, and, and it and it's going to eat away what what you know where it is it's the vessel right um before it hurts them i mean you know, they 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 just go on with life right right exactly right yeah. and sometimes you know the betrayer doesn't think they betrayed you they they feel there was a justification for what they oh, did oh they can oh, you can yeah. justify anything. and and many times they try to do that yeah. and so if you wait for them to say i'm sorry you may be waiting a long long time or someone may quickly say, I'm sorry, to try to alleviate the pain that they're experiencing, but they really don't mean it in their heart. Right. But in the scriptures, I believe we're called to forgive, and that may take some time. And I'll tell you something else I learned, Dale. So. Forgiveness isn't a one-time act mm -hmm. many times. For me, it was a daily act. Mm -hmm. Today, I choose to forgive my betrayer. Today, if I get an opportunity to get even, mm -hmm. I choose not to do it. The next day, I had to pray that same prayer. Mm -hmm. It was a daily act of forgiveness mm -hmm. for me. You know, and Jesus, when he prayed, said, forgive us, uh, you know, our, our trans as we forgive others. Yeah, right. But he's also talked about, give us this day our daily bread. Sure. And I think he could almost have added, today, help us to forgive those mm -hmm. who have wounded us and hurt us. It's, I think it's an initial decision, but then it has to be a daily act of I forgive, especially if we're still feeling the pain of that mm -hmm. betrayal. And, and it interesting, well, let me give you an example. I have a good friend whose wife and daughter were killed in a house invasion. Mm -hmm. And they caught the guy. Mm -hmm. and, and he was badly damaged in the process and was getting better slowly. And he said to me, Dale, can you set up a press conference for me? Because I want to answer all these questions that people are bugging me about. And I said, sure, I know how to do that. And uh, I said, what do you want to talk about? I want to forgive the killer. Mm. I said, what? Christian man, and I said, how can you do that? And he said, the Lord commands us. Mm -hmm. 70 times seven, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what he did. And it's so unusual right. at that level to be able to do it. But the other thing he said, and this is what I, the point I want to make, is he said, I think justice needs to be served. Mm -hmm. has nothing to do with me forgiving right. him whatever the justice system says up and to and including the death penalty, I'm fine with. Mm -hmm. But if I said, well, what would you do if you ran into him? He said, I'd kiss him on the cheek and forgive him, Right. which is a remarkable guy. Mm -hmm. I said, I would have buried, killed the guy, buried the guy, dug him up and killed him again, <laughs> you know, but he's a better person than I am, right. I think. What about your betrayer? If, if what he had done was illegal, mm -hmm. And you said it wasn't really, it was unethical, right. but had it been illegal and he entered the justice system, right. got arrested right. for it, where, did that fit, where would that fit into your forgiveness? Well, I do think you have to allow the legal process to come. And I'll tell you where I hear that a lot. As Pimwin comes to me, not too long ago, a lady came to me and she told me that she had learned um, that her husband had molested her daughter, which was his stepdaughter. And she said, I really want to forgive him, but the trial was gonna be very, very dependent on some things she knew and so forth. And she said, but does that mean I have to allow him to escape the justice system? And I said, no, I think the opposite's true. 
I think you have an obligation to your child to pursue that. You don't just let him walk free yeah. because you have to let him face the consequences of yeah. what he's done. Mm -hmm. But that is different. Releasing someone is not about saying, okay, we're not going to pursue it legally. Releasing someone mm -hmm. means I forgive you. I'm not personally trying to end, you know, even the score yeah. and to be painful. So I do tell people it's okay to let the legal process, in fact, you should let the legal process because a lot of times when someone has betrayed you, mm -hmm. they may betray someone else if they get away with it. Yeah. And so they do need to be held accountable. And yeah. many times you can have that because if a person is really repentant, they don't mind the consequences. That's and right. If they really are yeah. repentant and broken, I've about met people what like done. that too. That's right. Yeah. You know, I, that's that, the other side of this. That's exactly yeah. right. I have a friend yeah. who, uh, when he was younger, was a professional bank robber. And mm -hmm. even though he recently went to the Lord and he was in his 70s, he told me, he said, I never went back to the towns or to the banks where I robbed them. And I said, why? He said, because I genuinely believe the Lord has forgiven me and I don't want to walk in and anybody have been through the bank robberies that I caused the pain in their life. I don't want them to see me and right. have to relive that pain. Yeah. And I think that was really evidence of genuine repentance on his part. Yeah. Because he, he didn't want to inflict pain. And even if they're repentant or not, I think you still legally let people go through the process. Yeah, that's it. We need to take a brief break. Okay. Um, can you stay for oh, another sure. segment? Absolutely. Phil Waldrip, Phil Waldrip I said it right, <laughs> is uh, the author of Beyond Betrayal. We'll be back with more right after these messages. Dale Davidson and the team at Las Vegas Tonight firmly believe that the only solution to today's serious problems is the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Dale carefully selects his guests on the show, making sure that their dedication to our Lord is heartfelt and genuine, and that their ministries are making a strong and positive difference in the world. Dale doesn't charge anyone to be on Las Vegas Tonight. The cost to produce and air the programs are covered by donations from our ministry's partners. We thank you so much for your financial support and most of all for your prayers. Please consider becoming a partner of Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries for just $40 per month. For a little more than a dollar a day, you'll be helping us bring the good news of Jesus Christ to millions of people around the world. The television networks that broadcast the program reach from coast to coast in the United States and through internet apps cover the entire world. Your $40 monthly contribution entitles you to Dale's newsletter that gives you a behind the scenes look at the production of Las Vegas Tonight and inside information on the exciting guests Dale interviews on every episode. You'll also receive a copy of Dale's book, Las Vegas Tonight, From Sin City to Vegas Saints, an in-depth look at 10 of Dale's most intriguing guests, plus a very personal story of how Dale came to Christ and the challenges he faces in bringing the good news to the world. Become a partner of our ministry today by going to Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries website and clicking on the donate button or by emailing Dale at dale at lasvegastonight.tv or you can write him at Dale Davidson, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, Suite 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. Thank you for watching Las Vegas tonight and may God bless you abundantly. The Lord has made it possible for our show, Las Vegas Tonight, to thrive. We've produced well over 300 episodes telling the remarkable stories of Christians who have set out to change the world for the better. It's my honor to lead this ministry. As the founder of Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries, I'm commanded to be a good steward of all the donations our partners have so generously provided to us. As you can imagine, it takes a great deal of money to keep this program on the air in the United States and around the world. Please prayerfully consider making a one-time donation or becoming a monthly partner of Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries. Just go to VegasSaints.org and select Make a Donation or send your check or money order made out to Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. For more information, call 702-480-3989. Thank you and God bless you.
And welcome back to Las Vegas tonight. We've held over Phil Walder up here at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention in Nashville, Tennessee. And we have some more questions for him. He has written a book called Beyond Betrayal, and we've been examining what exactly happens when somebody betrays mm -hmm. you. Let me try this one on you. All right. What if that person has passed away? You know, that's hard because we sometimes, because if a person is, has died, there's no way you can restore the relationship. Yes, that's, that's obvious. What I mean. yeah. And sometimes people long for the betrayer to say to them, I'm sorry I hurt you. Right. And especially if, for example, it's a parent or maybe uh, uh, someone who's an older person who has mm -hmm. done that. We long for them to acknowledge our pain because sometimes betrayers won't do that. Yeah. Sometimes they look at you and say, I didn't betray you. That's, you know, I didn't do that. And they keep trying to justify their behavior. And I think sometimes that we have to say, Lord, I can't do it. Well, you know, I have simple things that when I wrote my book, Beyond Betrayal, that I suggest for people. And one of them is sit down and write that person a letter. Yeah. Even if they're deceased, you can't mail it. You yeah, probably don't want to mail it. Yeah. But you get to vent all the things that you're feeling, all the things that you're thinking, yeah. and yeah. put it to paper. And so you can kind of release those feelings. Yeah. Because remember, uh, you may long for that. You may not get that. If they were a believer, I think we get to heaven. All those are going to be settled anyway. Sure. But still, even if they've died, I think you can put to paper and process what you're feeling. And in some cases, I know people who have even found other people like a spouse or a sibling or something that helped them process what they were feeling. I know of someone who was deeply betrayed by their father and he had died and they, they longed for that affirmation and they found out that their dad's brother was a strong believer, which they knew that, but they went to him and said, here's what I'm feeling. And the uncle was able to give them the blessing that their father could not give them. Really? It wasn't the same, but mm -hmm. it helped heal their heart. Yeah. And that's what the uncle wanted yeah. to do. And when you're in a pastor's role mm -hmm. yourself, um, you must get this kind of stuff all the time, especially <laughs> the time. since you've written a book. Right. Can you replace the betrayer in the sense that you can show them, show this person who was, who was betrayed a pathway. You know, mm -hmm. can pastors do that? No, I think we can. I think any believer can. Yeah. Because whenever you've, you know, one of the things I've noticed, not about all betrayals, but about many betrayers, they have been betrayed themselves earlier in their life. Doesn't uh, excuse their behavior, yeah, but yeah. somebody betrayed them and they don't know any different. Yeah, it's, it's just like a, a generational curse. Yeah, it's yeah, almost like a yeah. generational curse that yeah. they pass on. You know, they got betrayed by someone or they watched maybe their parent, for example, be unfaithful to, to you know, like father being unfaithful to the mom. And so they feel there's a justification for it in their life. And it's not. So sometimes betrayers need to be confronted, obviously. Right. Sometimes they need to understand their pain that they're causing because they either don't see it or they don't feel it. Yeah. But I also tell people I have noticed many times with a betrayer, they will end up being betrayed themselves. And all of us, because oh, remember, yeah. a betrayer is very self-focused. Sure. They're selfish. And when they get betrayed yeah. and they experience the pain, everything's different. Oh, yeah. And sometimes, this is me. Exactly. I had, a man, <laughs> I had a man, I actually tell this story in my book, Beyond Betrayal. There was a man who actually came to see me. Really? And he was sitting, and, and I've known this man for years, and he had been married, and he was very unfaithful to his, his wife and they divorced and he married his girlfriend. And they had been married for four or five years. And now he's sitting in my office weeping because he's just learned that his wife, who used to be his girlfriend, <laughs> oh, had been unfaithful to him. And what, you know, why, why is he surprised? And you know, yeah. and yeah, and you know, I have to be honest, Dale, I'm not always the most merciful person. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and I said, so now you know how it feels. And he said, oh, but this was different. I said, no, it wasn't. You, exactly the pain the you're feeling now is the pain that you cause. And I'm not saying you deserve it. I'm not saying it's right. Mm -hmm. But I am saying you can now say, oh, I, I see now what my first wife was experiencing. And I, I don't know if he ever tried to ask his first wife's forgiveness, which I, I don't know if he did or not. But it was almost one of those moments, one of those few moments mm -hmm. that you get to look at somebody and say, how does it feel from the other side? Yeah. And, and I wasn't very merciful. I admit that. 
but I did help him to see that, you know, you God can forgive. You were a good forgive. friend, or, you know, and a good pastor because, mm -hmm. you know, you told him the truth. Right, yeah. right. Is it, ever, is it ever too late? I mean, say, you know, a father and, and a child, mm -hmm. and then now he's on his deathbed. Mm -hmm. uh, is it ever too late? No, forgiveness is never too late. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting in the scriptures, there were two times in the scriptures, in, in the New Testament, where Jesus was teaching and he said, on one occasion, he said, if you come to bring your offering and you remember that you know, you have ought against a brother, the old King James, and you remember you have something against someone, leave your offering and go make it right. But Jesus on another occasion said, if you bring your offering mm -hmm. and you remember someone has feelings are towards you, mm -hmm. leave your offering and go and make it right. One time he said, if you have those feelings or if mm -hmm. you know another one mm -hmm. has it towards you, and I tell people, I believe when you read those two stories, when it comes to forgiveness, it's always your turn. Uh, it's always your turn. That's interesting. And it's yeah. never too late. Yeah. You know, it's never too late to make right. In fact, I've talked to people who said, you know, I did something 30 years ago and it's all in the past. And I'm going to say, well, it may be. But you know, the words that you can say to people, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sorry, I hurt you. And you know, in, especially if they're not a believer, Right. They may not forgive you, but at least you've done what the Lord wants you to do. And it is evidence that you're really broken and sincere about mm -hmm. what you've done. But many times that can be the catalyst to bring about healing and hope and even somebody coming to know the Lord. Yeah, I was going to ask you exactly that mm -hmm. because he or she has witnessed Christian charity right. firsthand. And it's like, I can't believe this person is coming back to right. me and saying you know, what that they're saying. They were, they're acknowledging they're wrong. Yeah. And they're acknowledging that they betrayed someone. Yeah. You know, we think in the Bible, for example, everybody, when we think about betrayal, we think about uh, Judas and how he betrayed Jesus. Mm -hmm. But I, I tell you, there's another story of betrayal we sometimes miss, and it's in the Old Testament and the story of Joseph. Remember, his brothers betrayed him because oh, yeah. they sold him into slavery. And then he's betrayed by, you know, Potiphar's wife when he made the right. accusation. And then he's betrayed because when he's in prison, he interprets a dream. And the guy says to him, look, when I get out of here and I get back, you know, in Pharaoh's, I'm not going to forget you. Well, what did oh, he, he do? Did. He forgot him. <laughs> and so, but then when his brothers mm -hmm. comes back around and they come because there's a famine, and at that moment, they were so taken back because now Joseph is in a position for the ultimate revenge. He oh, literally could have, have him killed. put to death, yeah. but he didn't do it. And they were in shock and awe. But you know, when you read the story of Joseph with all the times he was betrayed, yeah. there's not one thing in the life of Joseph that we read about that was sinful or negative. Yeah. He processed all of those well. And I'll tell you how I think he processed it, is even though all those betrayals happen, he realized God's got this, that it's a setback, but you know, there's an old slogan people say, a setback can be a setup for a comeback. Mm -hmm. And he, it's, he said, God's got this and God is going, has a bigger plan. And that's the reason why, you know, he could say, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Mm -hmm. And I think to those who have been betrayed, remember, you may feel like mm -hmm. in that moment, that God has abandoned you. You may even feel betrayed by God, though yeah. God never betrays us. Mm -hmm. You may feel that way. People get angry at God. Sure, but sure. guess what? God's got this mm -hmm. and you may feel that way, but I've got news for you. God ultimately is gonna bring it out for his glory and your good. Yeah. There's a process, biblical process, mm -hmm. to deal with a member of your congregation who mm -hmm. misbehaves, right? Right. And uh, it's a whole series of steps that you should take. Is there, a pro is there a process that we can follow with that person when we forgive them? Well, yes. And I think part of that process is depending on whether the betrayer wants to restore the relationship. Because again, some betrayers don't want the relationship. It's like, I'm out of here. I, I just talked recently with a lady um, whose husband had left her for another woman. And she, you know, she was struggling, but she was willing to forgive and restore. But he let her know, I don't want to be married to you. I, I don't want the relationship restored. Well, mm -hmm. for her, she's got to move on without him. Right. But if there is a hope for rest restoration, then the person who's betrayed has got to be an open book. They've got to be willing to 
be checked on, uh, to allow that person to you know, have accountability and not be offended when they're making sure what you say yeah. is true. Yeah. And part of that is because once, as I said before, once trust has been destroyed, it takes a long time mm -hmm. for that, tr I mean, uh, to be restored. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that process happens. I think there's conversations. And it's also to be healthy if it's a tough conversation to find either a counselor or someone who maybe is a friend of both without mm -hmm. taking sides, who can kind of help you walk through that process. And that's okay. That's what Christian brothers and sisters sure, are they for, should. to yeah. help us and to pray through yeah, that. Yeah, and have accountability partners right. and all right. that sort of sure. thing that's recommended by the and church. And don't rush the process. That's you know, interesting. One, one yeah. of the things people do is they think we've got to hurry this process. No, it's okay to take time. You don't have to do it immediately. Make sure you're in a healthy position because if you haven't dealt with that anger and you're talking with the person who betrayed you, trying to reconcile, mm -hmm. and they say something, boy, they can touch that anger spot, oh, yeah. and then you do more damage Off than good. Go. So make sure you're ready for yeah. it. Yeah. We often can't forgive ourselves, mm -hmm. right? We do something we know we shouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. Even if we didn't actually hurt another person, right. we did something wrong. We can't forgive ourselves. What do, you, what, what do you say to people who find themselves in that position? Well, I, I tell people, remind them, if I can't forgive myself, what I'm saying is I have set a higher standard than God has set. Oh, I have put myself above God. Because God forgives. Because God, yeah. you know, sometimes people will say, I know God can forgive me, but I can't forgive myself. And what I think we're trying to process with that is we're trying to say, you know what, I just want to, I wish I could go back and redo what I did. Yeah, How could I have been yeah. so dumb? I didn't see the consequences of it. And we find ourselves kind of um, strapped to the past. Yeah. And you have to say, Lord, I messed up. I acknowledge my sin and I'm going to move on. Yeah. And, and don't set yourself up to where you have a higher standard than God has. If God can forgive you, you can forgive yourself. You may live with regret the rest of your life. Yeah, you could. But, yeah. but remember, turn that negative into something positive. And turn it's, yeah. your mistake into a message. And repentance is the key. Oh, absolutely. You know? yeah, absolutely. Because that's, that's what you were saying about when you have to forgive somebody who right. has wronged you. Mm -hmm. It's all about that. That's exactly you right. Know? Exactly right. And remember, when you're forgiving yourself too means that I can't set a standard so high, I can't live up to it. You know, that's really what the Pharisees tried to do. They set yeah, such a perfect. high yeah. legalistic standard that mm -hmm. they couldn't even live up to it. Mm -hmm. And so when they blew it, they thought life was over. But mm -hmm. life is not over when you blow it. Mm -hmm. Got to give you a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance. Just make sure your heart is sincere when you're saying, Lord, I, I messed up and I sinned and he'll forgive you, pick you up and keep going. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's been a fascinating interview. Well, I'm sorry you. to say we're out of time. Right. It's raced by. Right. But let's give everyone an opportunity to buy the book, at least, mm -hmm. beyond Belief by Phil Waldrop. Uh, where can they get the book? Beyond Betrayal. Betrayal. Yeah, betrayal. That's all right. It's, it's Beyond Betrayal. <laughs> beyond there, Betrayal. There is a yeah. wonderful website we have just for the book. It's easy to remember. Beyondbetrayalbook.com. Beyond betrayal it's also book. available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books and Million, all of those. But if you go to Beyond Betrayal Book, got to put the word book there, beyondbetrayalbook.com, okay. it'll lead you to all of those sources and you can get a copy okay. of the book. Okay, great. Perfect. I wish you luck. Thank you, you, my You friend. got another book in, in, in that head of yours? Probably I do. <laughs> I, you know, I, I wrote a book a few years ago called Reaching Your Prodigal for People Who Have Children Who Got Out of Church. Yeah. And uh, that book has been very helpful. And this one's speaking to people. So yeah. you never know where God's going to lead. But, yeah, I think there will be another yeah. one in about 18 yeah, months. Yeah, I'll bet that's right. Yeah, that's <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank Phil. you, Dale. Bless Phil Waldrop, you. Beyond Betrayal. Right. <laughs> I get it right that it. time. Okay. Thanks for watching Las Vegas tonight. We'll be back with more right after this. Hi, I'm Dale Davidson, host of Las Vegas Tonight. You know, radio has an enduring place in the heart of America. Sometimes it's music that can enliven your spirit or keep you company when you need some. More often for me, it's just been the right spoken word or two that can quiet my mind and soul. Radio brings me a reassuring word in the quiet of night or a welcoming voice early in the morning as I shake off the night's sleep and find my way into God's purpose for my day. And always, I find the best radio station is the one that brings me the best news. 
the gospel of Jesus Christ. My favorite radio station is KKVV in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's still right where it's been for years at 1060 on the AM dial, hovering over Sin City like a gospel airship, broadcasting the good news of the abounding love that Jesus Christ has for every single one of us. No matter who you are or where you live, you can receive God's word via the KKVV Gospel Airship. Just go to kkvv.com and click on Listen Live. KKVV is using all the tools that God's provided them, like podcasting and video streaming and video on demand to produce programs that lift up our fellow believers and save the lost. If you feel a calling to speak to others about Jesus Christ on your very own show, pick up the phone and call the station. They'll be happy to tell you how. Call KKVV today at 702-731-5588 or drop them an email at kkvvradio at hotmail.com. Please join me in becoming part of the KKVV family. You'll be glad you did. The Lord has made it possible for our show, Las Vegas Tonight, to thrive. We've produced well over 300 episodes telling the remarkable stories of Christians who have set out to change the world for the better. It's my honor to lead this ministry. As the founder of Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries, I'm commanded to be a good steward of all the donations our partners have so generously provided to us. As you can imagine, it takes a great deal of money to keep this program on the air in the United States and around the world. Please prayerfully consider making a one-time donation or becoming a monthly partner of Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries. Just go to vegassaints.org and select make a donation or send your check or money order made out to Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. For more information, call 702-480-3989. Thank you and God bless you. Dale Davidson and the team at Las Vegas Tonight firmly believe that the only solution to today's serious problems is the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Dale carefully selects his guests on the show, making sure that their dedication to our Lord is heartfelt and genuine, and that their ministries are making a strong and positive difference in the world. Dale doesn't charge anyone to be on Las Vegas tonight. The cost to produce and air the programs are covered by donations from our ministry's partners. We thank you so much for your financial support, and most of all, for your prayers. Please consider becoming a partner of Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries for just $40 per month. For a little more than a dollar a day, you'll be helping us bring the good news of Jesus Christ to millions of people around the world. The television networks that broadcast the program reach from coast to coast in the United States and through internet apps cover the entire world. Your $40 monthly contribution entitles you to Dale's newsletter that gives you a behind the scenes look at the production of Las Vegas Tonight and inside information on the exciting guest Dale interviews on every episode. You'll also receive a copy of Dale's book, Las Vegas Tonight, From Sin City to Vegas Saints, an in-depth look at 10 of Dale's most intriguing guests, plus a very personal story of how Dale came to Christ and the challenges he faces in bringing the good news to the world. Become a partner of our ministry today by going to Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries website and clicking on the Donate button or by emailing Dale at dale at lasvegastonight.tv or you can write him at Dale Davidson, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, Suite 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. Thank you for watching Las Vegas tonight and may God bless you abundantly. Welcome to Las Vegas Tonight. I'm your host, Dale Davidson. Each and every episode, we do our best to bring you interesting guests, fascinating guests. Sometimes they're in Vegas, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're in Nashville, which is where we are today at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention. And we're pleased to have with us Nikki White. Nikki has a great life story. And uh, 
is the most ha hospitality oriented person in America. <laughs> Live up well, to that. Well, probably not, but. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. You try. Thanks for coming on. I'm so glad to have been uh, invited to be here. Oh, that's great. Uh, you live in Boise? Live in Boise, Idaho. We've lived there about 29 years. Uh, and you've always loved it? Love it. Yeah. Love it. It's got just enough of all four seasons, not too much of any, and sunny 300 days out of the year. So. Oh, that you can't, can't it, ask for more it's than that. It's pretty wonderful. That's great. And um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Where did you grow up? How did you come to Christ? What was your family like? That kind so of thing. So I, um, I'm, I was adopted at an early age with my sister, Lissa, and we grew up on a horse ranch in Western Washington. Oh. And when I was 13, my adoptive dad died and we had to sell 29 of our 31 horses. And which was sad, you're kind of still grieving and then your horses all leave. And uh, yeah. we didn't have any income because my dad was in his 50s and he didn't have a will. My mom wasn't allowed to sell property or make any changes to the property until I turned 18. So wow. there was a lot of really rough years. There's a lot of things that were difficult and I'm people sorry. kept saying, and we found birth siblings later and, and all sorts of things happened. And because of this kind of crazy, uh, because of this, you know, rather crazy life, uh, People kept saying, someone has to write about this. Someone needs to write about this. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote my first book, Not Really a Princess, and that kind of tells a story. Not Really a Princess. Not Really a Princess okay. of all the things kind of that happened. And out of that stemmed this book, which... It's not about the pie, it's called. <laughs> it's not about the pie. Fresh not about the pie. On hospitality. And uh -huh. basically it has a lot of testimonies and stories of when people are in need and how the body of Christ uh, has helped them and yeah. reached out to them. Yeah. And because of that, I decided to add recipes that make people more, you know, feel more comfortable hosting people. So there's 47 recipes and there's yeah. some decor ideas. Wow, and so it's a, a lot beautiful, of, beautiful there's book. There's 200 photos and wow. there's a hardbound copy and a softbound. Yeah. So it can be a coffee table book. We'll show this on camera. And, uh, you know, so I think, you know, uh, through my dad's death, um, the person who did my dad's funeral invited us to his little church. And we went there and all three of us accepted Christ by that summer. And That's what, what that was can, about, right? right? The Lord see, can bring good right. to anything. And you see a path of how things happen. Mm -hmm. and, and you turn it into creativity, which is interesting. Um, I am an artist by nature. Are and you? so creating things, this book was actually not easy to create because it's la layout wise. Oh, and yeah. Tons of photo shoots There's and beautiful uh, photographs. In and, there. you know, just to having a vision sometimes is a curse too because I wanted it a certain way. And, sure. And, uh, Triple layer chocolate cake. How's that for a photograph, Tim? So there's Our videographer a lot, is also yeah. a still photographer. There's Look a lot of beautiful photography. Yeah. There's also some old pictures, obviously, like my mom's photo. We couldn't, she's passed away. So yeah, you there's couldn't no way to take that. a new, new picture or anything <laughs> yeah, like that. But. Yeah. And, uh, and you're close to your siblings? So my sister, Lisa, that I grew up with was mm -hmm. a half sister. And um, she found out. So we had two brothers that kind of found us when we were in our 20s and 30s and, and their families and we've spent time with them. And then when our birth mother, who I've never met, but um, they all knew, um, when she died, she said there was one more of us. And then we found a sister who's a year younger than me and she lives in Minnesota. And did you, have you met her yet? Yes. Wow. I've gotten to meet her. So yeah. had this whole new family but I also just feel like I'm, I grew up in the Maynard family and I, I feel like. That's your family. family. Yeah. 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 And, and mom and dad. It's fun to have extras, but <laughs> I never wanted to really seek them out because yeah. I loved my family that I was in. Yeah. Now is uh, hospitality, um, it's funny that you mentioned this. I have a friend, uh, Susan Stafford, who is an actress and a television host doing a lot of interesting things in the entertainment field. And one of my pastor friends said, 
Susan has such a gift for hospitality. Do you think it's a gift? And well, is it spiritual? You know, if you look at the spiritual gifts listed in the Bible, you, you have those listed and then like a few phrases down it says, and pra practice hospitality. I don't believe it's a spiritual gift. I believe it's just something we're all instructed to do. Oh, okay. I think we have to have a willing heart. Yes. And our house doesn't have to be perfect, hence the name, it's not about the pie. It doesn't right. have to be perfect. We just have to be willing. If someone stops by your house at 10 o'clock at night, are you gonna not let them in if they're in need? Yes. Because your house is messy that day? Yes. I don't think that's what God intends for us. Right. And it makes it pretty clear in the Bible that uh, taking care of uh, the stranger um, and feeding and housing a stranger is important. Totally, and we had a friend of my daughter's from college come live with us one spring break for a week because she didn't want to go home and she right. ended up staying for four months. Wow. She just was easy to have there and it was great and she became really special to us. And I think that people put too much, we don't sit on our porches nowadays and talk to our neighbors. We and, should, but we don't. We don't. And mm. and and I think we just need to be willing and I think we need to be really intentional of what we do for others. And we can even pray about it and ask, have God um, bring people to mind that maybe we need to check on that single mom or widow. I feel burdened for widows, obviously, yes. since I grew up right. with a widowed mom. And yeah. you know, maybe there's something wrong. Maybe their stove doesn't work. Maybe their mower doesn't work. Or what could we do to help someone? And it could be our neighbor. It could be someone at church. But if we don't check in on people, we won't know. That's, yeah, that's very well said because that those are the kinds of things uh, hospitality oriented that I grew up with and you know I'm from the mid Midwest and it seemed like people were friendlier and people were checking on each other and you know the uh, apocryphal uh, cup of sugar you know would go to the next door neighbor but I think we've lost it and we have to be as you say intentional about it you have to yeah. really decide you're gonna do it and even if you're Maybe there's someone that you know is sick and people are taking meals for them for a couple months or whatever, but it's just as easy sometimes to make three meals. So you could take that to that person, but then maybe you can just think of two people, like maybe a young mom that's having a hard time and maybe a neighbor that you don't even know and just take a meal to somebody else. And right. throw, I always use throwaway containers so, Do you? so they don't have to remember to get your dish back to you. Yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. Um, Tell me about your family, you have kids? Yes, I have four kids and six grandkids. Wow, that's fantastic. And do, do your, did your kids take this on, being hospitable and, and, uh, and learning from mom that we need to take care of neighbors? Well, my son had people live with him several different times and my daughter opens her home for things and two of my girls aren't married yet, but um, but they're really hard workers, and one of them always likes bakes for every event there is. And my other one mm -hmm. is um, my youngest is getting married in May, and mm. I, I'm sure they're all they're all pretty helpful. Yeah, and, were you the Kool Aid mom when they were growing up? You know about the Kool Aid mom? Well, I, <laughs> I didn't do Kool Aid. I didn't really love Kool Aid, but um, but we had people over. Yeah, um, yeah. We had a lot of events at our house. We had Super Bowl parties and, and swim parties. We had a pool for one of the houses we were in and uh, we'd have actually our annual church picnic there. <laughs> 150 people to dinner. Oh yeah, but, um, you know. 150 of your closest friends. But yeah, but then, yeah. but then again, you don't have to have everything perfect. You can use paper plates and sure. you know, you have it casual and you know, and. You don't, I think part of the point of the book is that it doesn't have to be perfect. Yes. And yeah. you can have someone just, if you want to visit with someone, just invite them over for a glass of lemonade or a coffee or mm -hmm. something and, and a cookie or something and just sit and visit with them. People just love being invited somewhere. Yeah, they do. And, and uh, people worry about what others are going to think about them. You know, my wife does that. You know, and where she'll say, oh, it's not, the house isn't right, is it? We know. all do that. Yeah. I think we're all self-conscious of that. Yeah. But then it's about us and not about the other person. Oh, that's a good way of looking and at I it, think, sure. 
I think sometimes you got to come out of yourself and out of your box mm -hmm. and you have to just think it's more important that these people enjoy themselves yeah. than me. But I get concerned sometimes. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's easier said it than is. done, isn't it? But you still have to do it because it's what God wants of us. Yeah. So. Uh, let's talk about the future a little bit. Um, you, another book in, in you, you think? I actually have like three or four in my head. Oh, really? Lined up. But yeah. Got to work on the first couple and I yeah. have just launched Colossians 312 Ministries in the last year. Okay, and, tell us about that. And uh, it's basically right now, it's currently just uh, resources for people that may not know how to reach out to someone, like maybe so someone with kids with addiction or right. or widows or orphans or any of the uh, compassion type ministries. Sure, uh, sure. And hopefully it will expand from there. So, okay. Well, I hope um, so. We're just getting started with that and then having two books out within the last three years. I'm just catching up a little, but I do have another one maybe in a year or so. Okay. But, um, well, that'll be great. We won't ask you to reveal the secret. We'll have um, you back on. I don't know which one will be first of those. So, uh, yes, that'd be great. Yes, thank you so much for the book. It's called It's Not About the Pie, A Fresh Look at Hospitality by Nikki White. And we'll put that up on the screen. And where can we get it? Amazon and Yeah, it's on everywhere. Amazon and you can Barnes & Noble or any Christian bookstore or, okay. or CB, CBD or any yeah. of that kind of stuff. Now, on your ministry, do you want people to contact you? And they can. Uh, How can they do that? Uh, Colossians, col312ministries.com. Okay. And they'll get you. Right. Okay. Or nikkikorin.com is my author website. So I have two websites. Nikki Corin. Yep. which is your middle name, yes. C-O-R-I-N-N-E. -N -N -E. That's a yes. pretty name, Nikki Corinne White. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much. I so appreciate it. Thank you. And keep up the good work. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dale Davidson, the host and producer of the Christian TV show, Las Vegas Tonight. I'd like to take a moment right now to talk to families. First, to the parents, grandparents, and others who watch over and care for our precious children, Child development experts say that children won't become fearful if you remain calm and reassuring. They say that you should answer your child's questions openly and honestly while staying positive and upbeat. And now to all the kids who are watching, your mom and dad and everyone who cares for you are making sure that you're safe. It's very important to them that you're happy and healthy because they love you very, very much. You know, an important way to feel better when you're scared is to talk to God. Let's say a prayer together now. Dear God, please take care of me and all the people I love. Help me to be strong when I hear or see scary things. I know that the people who love me are doing everything they can to keep me safe. Please give them the strength they need to be brave whenever they need to protect me. Thank you, God, for always loving me. Amen, and God bless you. Hi, I'm Dale Davidson, host of Las Vegas Tonight. You know, radio has an enduring place in the heart of America. Sometimes it's music that can enliven your spirit or keep you company when you need some. More often for me, it's just been the right spoken word or two that can quiet my mind and soul. Radio brings me a reassuring word in the quiet of night or a welcoming voice early in the morning as I shake off the night's sleep and find my way into God's purpose for my day. And always, I find the best radio station is the one that brings me the best news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. My favorite radio station is KKVV in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's still right where it's been for years at 1060 on the AM dial, hovering over Sin City like a gospel airship, broadcasting the good news of the abounding love that Jesus Christ has for every single one of us. No matter who you are or where you live, you can receive God's word via the KKVV gospel airship. Just go to kkvv.com and click on listen live. KKVV is using all the tools that God's provided them, like podcasting and video streaming and video on demand to produce programs that lift up our fellow believers and save the lost. 
If you feel a calling to speak to others about Jesus Christ on your very own show, pick up the phone and call the station. They'll be happy to tell you how. Call KKVV today at 702-731-5588 or drop them an email at kkvvradio at hotmail.com. Please join me in becoming part of the KKVV family. You'll be glad you did. Dale Davidson and the team at Las Vegas Tonight firmly believe that the only solution to today's serious problems is the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Dale carefully selects his guests on the show, making sure that their dedication to our Lord is heartfelt and genuine, and that their ministries are making a strong and positive difference in the world. Dale doesn't charge anyone to be on Las Vegas tonight. The cost to produce and air the programs are covered by donations from our ministry's partners. We thank you so much for your financial support and most of all for your prayers. Please consider becoming a partner of Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries for just $40 per month. For a little more than a dollar a day, you'll be helping us bring the good news of Jesus Christ to millions of people around the world. The television networks that broadcast the program reach from coast to coast in the United States and through internet apps cover the entire world. Your $40 monthly contribution entitles you to Dale's newsletter that gives you a behind the scenes look at the production of Las Vegas Tonight and inside information on the exciting guest Dale interviews on every episode. You'll also receive a copy of Dale's book, Las Vegas Tonight, From Sin City to Vegas Saints, an in-depth look at 10 of Dale's most intriguing guests plus a very personal story of how Dale came to Christ and the challenges he faces in bringing the good news to the world. Become a partner of our ministry today by going to Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries website and clicking on the donate button or by emailing Dale at dale at lasvegastonight.tv or you can write him at Dale Davidson, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, Suite 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. Thank you for watching Las Vegas tonight, and may God bless you abundantly. Come on and shine, shine, shine. Las Vegas, shine your light on me. You've been watching Las Vegas tonight with your host, Dale Davidson. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of our show. We so appreciate your loyalty to our program. To keep Las Vegas tonight on the air, please go to our website, vegasaints.org and click the donate button. To send a check or money order, please make it out to Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries and mail it to 9030 West Sahara Avenue, Suite 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. To suggest a guest to appear on the show or any other suggestions or questions, write to Dale at dalewdavidson at yahoo.com or call him at 702-480-3989. Shine Las Vegas, shine.